to enjoy the greasy full-length version of this derelict production, come on over to the Patreon. Keeping the dirty old beer a flowing and the 1202 a burning. I appreciate every one of you dirty old hillbillies that comes over. You got her mint. If not, this bitch is pretty good anyhow. Enjoy. Alrighty. Well, welcome back to the land of dirty old hand-rolled darts. Thanks again, Uncle Tony, for getting me hooked on the good stuff. And a case of dirty old... Willard's got a serious case of grass fart. I don't even understand how he finds grass. And it's green for f creek. Willard. Willard. Willard Elf. Where are you finding green grass to eat and then f out? Where? Where are you finding it? Are you stunned? You're stunned. Alrighty. Well, it looks like our first spring of many has sprung. We usually get about two or three springs. But I got a real treat of a video for you, Minty Pricks. You're gonna like it. It's a will to start, believe it or not. But it's a bit of a twist on her. It's got a bit of a twist to her. Willard, what are you doing? Are you stunned? Did we put you on a t-shirt? Yeah, we did. Guess what it says. Are you stunned, bud? Are you stunned? The answer is yes. Well, let's get this road on the show, shall we? These dirty old darts are just a treat. This is a taste of America for this hillbilly. That's America right there. About a year, well, it's almost two years ago, I uh, got to uh, enjoy one of those sitting beside the uh, a real American. Red, white, and blue, minty feather. And every time I just hand roll one of them up and start ripping on her a little bit, you know, the old stars and stripes and the eagles fly. It's just a treat, except for he likes dodges. You don't need to worry about being the guy at the auction that buys all the derelict nobody else wants, and then you get a good deal on it, and you realize it's not that good of a deal because there's a lot of bad things going on. <laughs> that answers your questions on if dogs should be vegans or not <sighs> right there they eat it to throw up i wonder what willard ate this time that he wanted to throw up a liberal democrat probably another couple spark plugs so today's video is going to be a will it start video and obviously this hot pile of fur fried right up so you're sitting there sipping on your beer wondering peg what are you stunned and the answer is yes yes i am stunned but the question is will it start now that that's been the, the, the theme of lube tube for a while now it's been the theme of my life since i was uh well even even in the old two-legged days see there was a time long long ago in a place far far away where i had a couple of legs man hashtag two-legged days don't even look that stunned but yeah the old will it start so everybody does these videos where they they go out into the bush and they find some derelict pile and they they get her running and they drive her home well i drive derelict piles every day speaking of which i ordered brake pads for the 89 dynasty on rock auto and look at that minty old box only a true hillbilly gentleman can appreciate the ins and outs of a dirty old clapped out box. But this has been sitting on the shelf for a while and they were $9. That's just a good deal. This is going to be completely bass backwards to what I usually do. So what I usually do is I struggle around trying to find all my minty batteries and go hobble out to the middle of nowhere and get some hot pile running, right? Well, today's going to be bass backwards. Like a, like a whole nother dimension, whole nother universe. What we're going to do here is we need a dead battery battery a completely dead battery which i know i know what you're saying don't worry i'm going somewhere with this we're going to need a completely dead battery and uh this is going to be one of them situations that every one of my hillbilly brothers had ran into every one of you guys if, if this has never happened to you then then i don't even think you can call yourself a certified piss tank so this has happened million times you get in the old furred you get in the old chevy the old shipping crate you head her on down to the pit party to the lake or the river you're giving her all the way you're sipping on some lattes you know having a gay old time not like a 2024 gay old time but like a uh, you know the flintstones variety we'll have a gay old time so you're down at the old pit party river or lake you're having a good time you got the tunes cranking you got the beer cracking everything's good everything's golden uh, this one's for toby Life couldn't be more grand. You know, maybe you got some Fleetwood Mac going on. You know, you got the Toby Keith. Sound and mint. Maybe a little bit of Hank Williams Jr. I mean, them old fur door speakers, they got to put out. 
stock from 1997. So there you have it. You're sitting there, you're cranking some quality tunes. You got the old Ferd backed up to the old piece of water of whatever variety. You know, if it's an old oil bird, that's probably a, a mist of condensate oil just sprinkled over the top of the, uh, the old pond or river. I mean, that's just a good time. That stuff lights on fire. So you got the 1997 speakers cranked all the way to 11. That's what's gonna happen. And to match cranking the speakers all the way to 11, you got a beer in hand and you're cranking your liver all the way to 11. That's, that's also gonna happen. Whatever's free. Take it easy, Ron. Open bar, dude. And before you know it, you're doing what Willard did with that dirty old vegan food. And you're spraying it out of your mouth hole at about 6,000 miles an hour. <laughs> and then, if you're fortunate enough to pass out, you're underneath your truck or inside of it with an idling. Sometimes you don't always make it inside of there with an idling. Ask me how I know. The tunes are still cranking, the lights are still on, and you're passed out underneath the truck with a serious case of 6,000 mile an hour vomit. <laughs> It happens. It's the way she goes. That's the way she goes. So, you wake up six, seven hours later, if you're lucky, you know, old Johnny Law hasn't shown up to <laughs> your cornflakes. Nothing bad's happened. You're having a good old time. You go ahead, you know, you, you wake up. I could go for a <laughs> smoke right <laughs> now. You have a little bit of hair on the dog, hair off the dog, whatever the case may be. You crack into one of these. You're standing around, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, today's gonna be all right. You don't need to worry about going into work. I mean, it's Thursday morning. That's an oil patch Saturday morning. That's just how that works. So you had yourself a fresh one. You're watching the sun rise. You're, you're sweating a little bit of the old liquor out. All of these things are happening. All of these things are meant. Then you climb on over the old fur, you do the old Terry top into the old prick. You go ahead, you grab the key, you shove in the old man pedal, and she did. That's a lot of dim. What are you gonna do now? What the f creek are you gonna do now? So your choices are limited. You could either call your old man, you can be probably pissed off if you're youngin'. But if you want my help, you gotta listen. Number one, stop being a Number two, make a move. He doesn't want that. He doesn't like that. Can't call your mom, because that ain't cool. I have had it! Can't call your buddy, because he was probably getting pissed up right beside you. You know what they say, a friend will help you move, but your best bud will help you move. A body. And if he's there, you're screwed. So you got no one to come get you. You don't call AMA because you don't sit the piss. Now your third Chevrolet Dodge is dead. There's no way to get the old prick running. But you remember, when you reach down, you got yourself a pair right there. You need to stand up and be a man. There ain't many of us left, but stand up and be a man. A big old greasy set. And you prepare for these things. Because why? We live by the seven Ps. Proper, previous, planning, prevents, piss poor performance. Burt Gummer once said, if you need it and don't have it, you sing a different tune. So, you hobble out of your old truck here. The battery is stone cold dead. And now uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and kill ourselves the battery. Just look at this. Yeah, another ADD moment. Another squirrel went by. Well, look at this. That's mint. I've, I've been told that in 65 and 66, this means that it had a straight six under the hood. I, I don't know. I, I, there's been a bunch of these with the V8 and this, that, and the other. But I was told in certain years with, with the Ferds and the Mercury's, I think, that they had this on there and it meant it had a straight six under the hood. And lo and beer hold, this old Ferd has exactly that. What, treat? Yeah, yeah, I get it. If I spent $25,000, I'd be able to get 214 horsepower out of the 7.3 that was in there. I'm sorry, four guys. Stop! Stop! Do not come near my car! What? I'm gonna hurt you in two seconds. That Relax. Just calm down. Relax. All right. So just, we gotta take a pause for a second here. So the whole scenario is your battery's dead. Well, I'm not gonna kill that good battery. I've been trying to kill this thing for the last two days. But that LED light, believe it or not, doesn't draw a whole lot of ampers. So we're gonna have to kill this battery. We're gonna bring this thing down to Slave Lake. We'll just put it in there. That'll be mint. I mean, she spends her whole life killing batteries. I mean, why, uh, why stop a good thing, right? Where the hell is Rhonda? Speaking about killing beers and batteries, old Rhonda here, she has seen her fair use of alcohol abuse. I tell you what, this thing used to be mint condition. Well, it's still mint. The beer did flow through it pretty hard. Oh, come on, Rhonda. Like it was just shut off. What a treat. Gotta get my yoga mat dialed in here. I'm doing yoga, see? and observe the energizing effects of that heart opening pose. All safe and Oh yeah, man. Are you stunned? 
Old slave leg. We need you to kill the battery for us. You're good at it. It's got two good batteries in it. Well, they're probably dead. Where, where's the hood prop? Bring me a hood prop. Are you looking for some more green grass to eat, you stunk? Are these batteries still alive? What do you guys think? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mint. All right, we're just going to unhook them. And then we're going to put the battery beside it. And then we'll just, uh, just let her die. You don't think it'd be so hard to find a dead battery around here? Because usually when it's minus 40 outside, that's all you find. All right, it's still cranking? Oh, yeah. Real bad connection. Willard, are you stunned, bud? All right, how's she crank now? Man, I mean, we almost have to fire it up. We were down here cranking it. We might as well fire it. The old uh, squirrel brain really goes off on a bit of a tangent all the time, but I mean, that's just the way she goes. And no, we're not gonna use the glow plugs, even though we proved that Old Slave Lake not addicted. Oh, we gotta use two Cosby sauce cans. One in there, huh? right there, and then one sprayer down her throat hole. I don't even know where I got this stuff. Oh no, that's Princess Auto stuff. Well, it was on sale. It's probably not just their stuff. Now that we had her started, we'll leave the injection pump off and uh, we'll leave the headlights on until uh, I get back from the gun show with Sawed Off Frenchman. All right, lights on? I think the light, oh yeah, lights are on. And now we're just gonna leave her. Leave her A, leave her B, and it'll uh, kill that battery. Mint. All right, well, better man than myself once said, You got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Well, and that is, you can't start up old Rhonda without taking her for a little bit of a side wheelie. trouble is that during an ATV's average lifespan of seven years, there is a one in three chance that the ATV will carry its rider to serious injury or death. Government experts say it is by far the most dangerous vehicle on the market today. Shut up! See, there's not a lot of folks out there that know this, but these throttles only have two settings, on and off. Willard, why are you laying right in the puddle? Are you stunned? You know, you don't have to lay in it to drink out of it, right? There's nothing going on in that head. Not, in, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. All right, so Slave Lake's really good at killing batteries if you go and sit in Slave Lake and crank for hours, but I left the battery in Slave Lake, didn't even kill it. So I had to take both batteries out and put them in the old screw cab schlong box, left the lights on all night and uh yeah we did a minty job of killing batteries now back to the simulation all right about nine o'clock in the morning after a long night of giving her i will crack yourself a fresh one give one for burp you know you stagger out from underneath the truck or in the truck or wherever the case may be you get yourself a nice hand roll staggering around the old river site having a minty old morning everything's as it should be you know things are minty as like oh yeah gonna jump in the old fur here go to fuck home your head's about the same size as the you were pounding on last night, and lo and behold, 
the fur is completely dead. Now, when I say dead, I mean she's properly dead. Like, this thing ain't moving. There ain't nothing left in the battery. So we'll grab out the old wall gas meter here. Let's see what we got here. We got sweet and all, and sweet left town. So you got a dead battery. You're sitting there, your head's pounding. You, of course you forgot your howling all at home, unless you're a champion like my triple ass. Uh, I got the whole hangover pharmacy in here. You got the Advil cold and sinus. You got the mullet maker 500. Buddy, you got matches, fucking winch controllers. All of the winch controllers are Oh, yeah. You got twin stick garage stickers that you've had in there for ever. We got all the in here. There's some other stuff in there that requires a key to rally on, but other than that, you're good to go. All right, so your truck's dead. You want to go home. You want to have a shower and wash off that layer of filth. I got the poo on me. Your best buddy's with you. You're you and him are standing around, you're going, oh, we can't call our dad, can't call the old lady, can't call anybody. We gotta get out of this situation on our own. Why? Because we're men. And what do men do? We stand up when we piss and we shit with the door open. So, you got yourself a mint truck, you're a man, you know, you woke up, you piss standing up. When you go out to these buckles, you're gonna have a few things with you. You know, sometimes I will actually have a jumper pack with me because, you know, your truck's a piece of Sometimes, or you know, low and beer hold, there'll be another battery laying in the box. These things happen. I will have those sometimes, but but the simulation is right now is you got sweet and all. So we got to get this pile of running. All right, first thing on the docket. So you got to go <clears throat> climb up the old Rebco and have a gander in the old pickle trunk and see what you got to get yourself going. You got to lock this thing up all the time because there's a bunch of greasy crackheads that like to steal all your. So don't lose your key. Hide it somewhere on the fur. Oh yeah, and Princess Auto had those ratchet straps on sale. Go ahead and buy yourself 10 of those. All right, open up the old pickle trunk of mintiness. Now I got everything in here, cause I'm a man, all right? I don't need to call AMA. I don't need to call anybody, cause I'm a man. So are you guys, you got your minty as So what we gotta do is we gotta get that minty 5.9 liters of Cummins engine running. So we're gonna do this three ways, all right? This is the first way that I think might work. I've done it for a little bit, but uh, it didn't really work because I was really drunk. So, you know, that's the way she goes. By the end of this video, that might actually happen. Hell yes. But in this pile of shit, we got Mel Joaquinis, we got batteries, we got the shot blank bandolier. What for uh, lube tube? I'm gonna take a huge hot dump on this. But what we also have in here, because we're a man, we don't sit the piss, is we got a steel chainsaw. That's right. All right, so we'll dig the old steel out of here. So we got that guy. So a real man will always have more in here than you'll ever need. So what I like to keep in here is a V-belt. So I'm about to get this old bird running with a V-belt, one of my M12 Malwalkini batteries, and a chainsaw. How am I gonna do that? Well, you just sit there, crack yourself a cold one, and uh, enjoy. All right, we're down to the river right now. We're down to the old pit party. We don't have all this minty at our disposal. But you are gonna have a chainsaw, and you're gonna have a V-belt. You gotta have this in your box. If you don't, you're stunned. Take your old bar tool here, pull the old bar off. This old MS390, she's seen some red line in her day. How much? All of it. All right, so you got your saw out, you got the bar off, chains there. This isn't a blade, all right, people? This is a chain, it's a chain and a bar, not a blade. If, if, if you walk up to a feller and he's talking about how he knows chainsaws and he calls that a blade, that strikes two and three. You gotta rate that off. So you got your saw here, you got the cover off. Now a lot of huskies, I think, I think it's a husky. The, uh, the ring here that holds the uh, clutch cover on. I think it's a husky. I don't know. I don't sit down to piss, so I don't have a whole lot of those around, laying around. So, so what what you're gonna want to have here is something as such. So you see how the V belt kind of just cogs onto there. Well, you're drunk and hung over, and you're not gonna have a very steady hand unless you've had a couple of beer to stave off the old shakes. But you're gonna want to have a ring on here bigger than what they come with. I mean, you could piss with this. If that's what you got but you're gonna want to maybe if you got it find a, a fender washer or some kind that'll fit on here that'll work you're saying peg you're not gonna have a fender washer laying in the bush you're wrong you're wrong you know that guy when you walk up to his truck and he's got so much shit laying in there he's over gbw going down the road because all the shit got glove boxes full center console full richie bros receipts all of it and look in here just a treasure trove of minty Extensions, I didn't even know I had. Man, right there, what is this? You got brake clean, pocket choke and carb clean. You never know when you might need to clean the carburetor on your 12 valve. So you're gonna root through here, you got the Avis locks, you got minty, you got the hammer, you got punches, all this. You're gonna wanna have some fender washers, there you go. There, see, all of this minty and there's a woman sitting there right now going, oh, I know what this hillbilly's talking about. Every time I get in my husband's truck, my boyfriend's truck, all this 
balled out and hitting the floor? Well, yeah, you're gonna have that. So that fender washer ain't gonna do. Uh, this one'll do. Oh yeah. You're gonna wanna have all this laying around all the time. That's how it works. So you can take this guy, take your choke, adjust your 500, pop this C-clip off the old saw. All right, any man, any man that tells you that you don't need a Leatherman, well, you can tell them to get Take the old Leatherman wave, pop the old C-clip on there. So now what we got is a derailleur device. So that guy can go on there like so, and it'll give you a little bit of Murphy, what for that thing coming off of there, maybe. Or it might completely bung up and out. We don't know, we're just gonna give her. All right, so next on the list, find a safe place to put your beer, right over here on the on the heater box in the fridge is usually a pretty good spot. <clears throat> find a good place for your multimeter. I do always carry a multimeter in my Ford. As you see, there ain't sweet all in that battery. She did. So what we're gonna do now is just pull this belt off of here. We gotta get the belt off. <clears throat> Princess Auto Breaker Bart, mint. I was actually rooting through this old Ferd the other day because me and the old lady went on a cheeseburger picnic and uh, I found three of these breaker boxes, breaker bars in that box that uh, I didn't even know I had, so that's awesome. All right, now just peel your belt off. Leave her sitting over here like such. It'll usually pinch in there so you can get her get her in there nice and deep black. Man, old Uncle Tony's got me on the hand rolls big time. Big shout out to that guy. Just a minty <laughs> old prick. So you got your alternator exposed. So I don't know how it is on the old 6.5 Chevys, 6.2 Chevys, the old 5.9 Cummins of the uh, shipping crate variety, the alternator's up here. And the 7.3 Power Smoke, the alternator's up here. So yeah, you got your alternator all dialed in. You got your chainsaw dialed in. Now you just gotta line the two up. All right, so I always keep a can of old saw gas right there. You know, might as well use the shop saw gas instead of the truck saw gas. We're doing a simulation here, we're being proper. So what you're also gonna wanna do, and you know, wish in one hand, shit in the other hand, see which one fills up first on the hope scale, is uh, dump out all your bar oil, cause that's gonna start partying with that belt. It's gonna make a real mess. All right, so you got your saw, make sure it starts. Well, it's a steel, so it will start. Oh yeah, what a treat. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take this guy, hook that on the old alternator, and then hook the fucking chainsaw right to there. So you're gonna wanna get comfortable with this cause you're gonna be here a while. All right, fire it up. That's your seat belt. Now this is old Chevy or old Ford, it'll already have a V-belt on her. I got fancy serpentine So, take the chain brake off and give her a spin. You got her spinning like crazy, but it ain't putting out. It's like uh, taking the old lady for some wine and dine and not touching it where the end of your pecker stings. I mean, that's just bull****. But what the problem here is, is you've left the battery on. Old Garth Brooks and Colin Baton Rouge has completely f***ed the battery to where it won't excite the alternator. All right, so you're a man and you're gonna have Milwaukee batteries in there. Let's go grab a Milwaukee battery out of here. Mint. So there's your Milwaukee battery. You got power on that side, ground on that side. Now we're gonna need a chunk of wire out of here. There's always wire in this pile of shit. I always gotta roll a wire somewhere, so let's grab that. All right, well you go ahead and take your uh, chainsaw carb tool here. Remember back in the day when you go into a farm store or whatever and you come on out and they'd, they'd hand you a screwdriver, one of them little screwdrivers for adjusting chainsaws and it'd have the company name on it. That's the kind of time I wanna live in. If you, if you youngins don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and ask an old timer, maybe your old man, and he'll tell you. That was a good time to be alive. Back when men were men, you know, and sheep were scared, none of that nowadays. Everybody likes to drive around on their tofu garbage nowadays, trying to be as useless as possible. But back in the day, men were men. We're gonna hook this guy up to here and hook this guy up to here, and we should have whatever that battery got in it, some kind of 18 volts. We got 19.81 volts in there. So that's way too many volts for this thing, but it's a small battery, it, it, it'll be just fine. You don't have to worry about all those ratings and So what we'll do now is we'll hook this guy up here. So if you know anything about an alternator, is an alternator is unable to make power without getting power. So it needs some kind of horsepower of the wall gas variety to get her all fired up. So we'll just take this old Mel Joaquini and while the chainsaw is running, well, what it'll do is uh, you can do it right now. You can just hook it to the battery and it'll, uh, it'll automatically charge the alternator to have her start. But for you guys, I'll start running the alternator with the chainsaw and then I'll just grow a third hand out of my ass, touch her to here, take a sip off my beer, and show you guys some magic. You guys ready for this chain break? That's the only time I'd use it. 
So we're gonna get comfortable, remember? You got her spinning, right? You guys see there's nothing coming out? Ah, oh, for f***ing You're gonna have to take a mulligan on that one. That, do I got the negative? Oh, I was hooking the battery up backwards. That, that, okay, you're not gonna wanna do that either. But we lost the belt and we cooked the battery a little bit. But I mean, you're gonna be drunk and hung over. All of this is supposed to be a real life scenario. Worst case, Ontario. We'll stick her on the other side here. So that's negative over here. Uh, uh. Alrighty, take two. See, we got off for voltage here. Huh? All right, so meow. Take the old chainsaw again, fire it back up. All right, now we got the battery hooked up, right? Now hopefully your best buddy with you, he can give you a hand, but even if you don't have anybody with you, you can get this done. Break off. All right, you gotta start spinning the alternator. So you guys see, the alternator's spinning, but the alternator's not putting out. So take a gander in this. Yeah, it might take a few tries here. Keys on. I forgot. Key on. Ignition on. All right, let's try it again. Multimeter died on me. Proof of concept here. We're gonna take a gander here. So now we got 2.140 volts. So it's gonna be going down, the key's on. The Anything in the cab with the key turned on is gonna be robbing power. It's gonna be killing anything that you put in the battery right away because there ain't a whole lot in there. So we use the Milwaukee battery to excite the alternator. Now you're gonna wanna open up two or three beer and lay them across the rad support here unless you got your buddy with you because you're gonna be standing here for a while running the out of this chainsaw to try to get that alternator to charge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand here the whole time sipping on that beer, see if I can't charge this old Series 31 up enough to uh, get this old thing to start. But don't worry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get us out of this predicament with my chainsaw and a V-bell. Well, let's get this road in the show, shall we? All right, 0.8 of a volt left in that uh, battery right now, so I might have to re-excite it. <sighs> here for a second i wanted to grab a timer so it's 120 we got old benjamin franklin there you know early to bed early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise that guy's minty as f but uh so we got him here we got uh 120 in, a, in the afternoon we're gonna give her all the way with this we're gonna see how long it takes to charge the battery enough to where we can start it i think i'm gonna be here a while and this thing's shooting gas out everywhere so that's fine 
All right, so we got a couple of these guys, which I do keep in the truck all the time, hooked up to a couple of wires. I gotta roll the wire back there. And that is feeding 16 volts into the alternator. It's killing this battery rather quick, but uh, what we're gonna do now is just hook her all back up and give her all the way. <laughs> for comfort I'm gonna go back up here and then uh, sit here try this again anyhow this was a little more comfy than down there I'll take my picnic blanket I'll put it on my balls go ahead and grab the old v-belt here something like so oh yeah yeah no that'll do I'll be able to relax like that today all right let's try her again <laughs> shift and giggles if there's enough cranking power in there to get her to fire i don't know we, we haven't been going at her for very long so i don't think it's going to be enough but see there goes that nut but we're going to go ahead and just give her a crank and see what happens what do you guys think think there's enough in there i don't think so yeah yeah all righty well there you go there's your answer can you and now there ain't no belt on it right now, what for we unhooked it. But there you go. I charged the battery up enough that we're able to get the uh the charge. That's awesome. But I did get her to go without uh with a chainsaw. That's pretty good. Well let's kill it. Let's see if we can't get it to start again with the altercator going. We gotta do her quick because the battery's gonna be kinda half ass dying the whole time. Alright, so the belt is re-rallied. Let's see if there's enough get up and go in there to blow her socks off again come on girl don't cut her Piece of there ain't enough juice in it now a normal guy in a normal loop tube video will go ahead and fire it up and maybe throw a jumper pack on there but this fat cripple is going to show you how it's done i'm gonna go back out there pull the bell back off and we're gonna spin that alternator until we get enough charging bolts so let's top the saw back off because technically i won this war i did I did win it, but I didn't win her all the way with the belt re-rallied, and that's just cheating. All right, we got the belt off again. We're going to put the more 1203 back in the old steel here and uh, get back to her. I got to find the belt again. Off the chainsaw that's fine there's a lot of burnt rubber in here if you guys weren't 100 percent sure i was a furred guy you might figure that i was doing dodge stuff in here so i think we got her charged up enough we got look at the fucking hole i melted to the rad we're gonna have to grab the old princess auto jv weld and go over that a little bit but that's fine or right, i'm gonna put the belt on all right how much smoke could i breathe in of the uh of the saw gas variety all of it all right put the belt back on get my picnic blanket out of here Alrighty, so meow, we'll hook this guy up quick. My stupid daytime running lights are what's left of my battery. Alright, let's see if she goes. Man! There you go! Oh, that's charging 14.2. Man! Belt's back on her. You're good to go home. Yeah! 
All righty, well, we're gonna kill the old battery, kill the truck, turn on all the lights, and we're gonna let this battery die once again. That's gotta be good for the old Series 31. Oh, yeah. Oh, you hear all the relays bobbing and booping? They don't like what's going on with that low voltage in the, uh, all the light bars and shit. Won't even fire the front ones. Is it firing the back ones? You don't need to worry about being hard on the electrical. So let's just say this. If you were trying to take the old skin flute into Tuna Town the night before... What do you say we go back to my place? I'll show you my cannelloni. And the old lady wasn't having it? I find you disgusting. The minute you come down from that engine compartment smelling like diesel, two-stroke smoke, the engine's running and she's going home, you're gonna get a piece. Put a bag on my head. I'm gonna tell you that right now. That's impressive. All right, did I stop? I put the chain back on her. Let's do the drop test. Oh, still lots of compression. <laughs> We're good to go. We didn't kill the saw, but it does definitely look like uh, there was a Dodge guy truck meet here with all the burnt rubber and this, that, and the other, but I mean, that's fine. Oh, it doesn't look like a Dodge guy truck meet just yet. Hold on. There, now it looks like a Dodge guy truck meet. I mean, you got the lube, you got the rubber fist, and there's burnt rubber everywhere. I mean, that's the sticky dope. It's KFC bucket rims of every stick dope dog in the stick dope. Ugh, it squatted. Ugh, it's sick and dope. <laughs> Take it away from me. I'm sorry, I love you. You gotta get out of here. I can't read. <laughs> I hate to be that old guy that's always saying back in my day, but back in my day, squatting your pickup means you were hauling a load of gravel, hauling a camper, hauling one ton Tanya. You didn't purposely kill the springs in your truck just so you can be sticky dope trick dog dope. Like what? what's wrong with these kids these days? All right, well meow. Let's say, for example, a feller did not have a chainsaw and a V-belt with him. I always have a chainsaw and I always have a V-belt. I did not have two V-belts. I killed not one, but two V-belts doing this, right? So I didn't have two. I w I'm unprepared. I'm on lighty feathers. I'd probably be able to make this work to get it running. I mean, I did have this left and, you know, I would be able to get this to work, I, w I would say so. If I was in a pinch, you know, and push came to shove, I'd be able to, uh, to make this dingle, but I don't have it. But let's say I didn't have any V-belt. I got no V-belt. I'm V-beltless. Man, I am right tuned up on, on leaded race gas right now. Like, it, it's proper. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Hold on here. Oh, oh what a treat. A lot of fellers out there saying, hey, if you, you end up burning yourself through a bunch of galvanized steel, you want to go in the house and drink some milk. Well, if you end up burning yourself through a bunch of leaded race gas, Miller Lite is known to clear that right out of your system. Science! Write that down. So let's say, for example, you do not have a chainsaw and a V-belt handy. And that happens, that, that'll happen. Or you didn't bring gas, or your saw won't start. Something like that. You're still f you're on the bush, battery's dead, truck will not start. So what else do you got? So you're with your drunk buddies, right? You're with your drunk ass buddies, and maybe he's one of those guys that likes to go to the gym. A bunch of them muscle triplicating, bar eating guys that can't even bend over far enough to wipe their ass. Maybe you got one of those guys with you. Well, let's see if you can get your truck running with one of those guys. So you're sitting there saying, Peggy Lang, what the f are you talking about? How are you gonna get your old furred running with a dead battery with old muscle triplicator bar McGee? Well, I'll show you. Well, I'm not really muscle triplicator bar McGee. I'm more of a uh, fat cripple Terry Fox, but I think I might be able to get this old goose to cook. All right, so you're gonna wanna go to Princess Auto, buy yourself a bunch of ratchet straps. You're gonna wanna buy the long ones. And if you don't have the long ones, you're gonna wanna buy yourself a bunch of the short ones. Tie a knot in there. All right, my favorite part of the video is I get to lay on the floor and be a fat walrus. The army was trying to create an elite group of Arctic commandos. They called it Operation Infinite Walrus. Crank this guy out. Now you're gonna wanna have a good purchase on this. What for, uh, yeah, if it comes off of here, you're probably gonna have a bad time. <sighs> That's called foreshadowing. All right, come over here and grab yourself a chunk of dirty old Pinocchio pecker. You guys ever hang out with those guys? I don't know if uh, you're one of those guys or you hang out with one of those guys, but they seem to uh, spray or douse themselves or whatever it is in way too much Cologna. Like to the point where it's burning your eyes just to hang out with the guy. Like what, what in the sweet fiddler's is that? Like buddy, relax, it stinks. No one likes that. My, my buddy man bear pig. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. I love the guy, but when he was a young man. Bear pig. I come out of my trailer, I lived in town, eh? When I first moved to the old, uh, the promised land of Alberta. What does that mean by promised land? Well, uh, they promised that if you come here from any other province and start about Alberta, they'll uh, tell you to get But old man bear pig, 
was standing. Uh, well, I was downwind of them, but I was about 40, 50 feet away from them, and I could smell them Guido smelling getting out of the pickup truck. It was hideous. Do women got, like guys that smell like that? Because the guy smelled like a chemical waste dump for creek. So you're gonna want to off here. Hey, Leila, check it out. I'm f***ing off. And get your truck in the air, about as high as this jack will go. So I have no idea if this is gonna work or if I'm gonna die, but we're gonna f*** around and find out together. All right, so we got the old skiddy here, park sidewards, so she can't get any momentum to f*** off forward. That's good, that's all the safety. So next thing you wanna do is go change your GoPro battery again, because it's a piece of Oh, yeah. You're on Vidya. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing Vidyas. Doing Vidyas? Doing Vidyas. Hey, how, how, how would you get an old fur to start with a ratchet strap and a bottle jack? I gotta get to start with a ratchet strap and a bottle jack? Yeah. And a job and a sheet of plywood and, 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 a, and a leather glove. And a leather glove and a job and a sheet of plywood. Ah. All right. Well, that was my brother from the same mother. He's out operating. All right. So we got the ratchet strap. We got the Princess Auto fing uh, giving her all the way bottle jack. So, meow, what we're gonna wanna do is wrap this on here. So, anybody that's a man has had a uh, an implement of gas burning variety that the fing rewind blows apart on. And uh, he's gone ahead and wrapped the rope on that 100 times. Well, basically, we're gonna do that, but with a 10,000 pound truck. So, we're gonna wanna take this guy. So, when we pull on it backwards, the wheel's gonna go forward, right? So, we're gonna wanna just wrap her around here, real safe like. Now, I don't know if we're gonna have to tie two ratchet straps together on this or what, but, but we'll, we'll around and we'll find out here. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got her. So I do owe this part of the video to Too Cheap to Smoke. If you guys don't know who that guy is and you don't watch his videos, let me tell you this. You're missing out. That guy's a beauty. So we got that wrapped around there. We're going to want to uh, open the door of the old Ferd here. So the truck's dead. Keys turned forward. We got nothing. Headlights. Everything's absolutely dead, right? So meow, you're going to take your fast idle stick. We're going to give her fifth gear to start. Obviously clutches out and we're going to give her fast idle about a uh, third of the way down. So if this thing does start, it's going to be violent but i mean that's men don't worry we got a skid steer here in a way to, to protect us this is all kinds of safety going on now i don't know exactly how hard this is going to be to spin over this is going to be a lot of learning and around and finding out here but uh yeah let's just on and find out what we're going to do actually is going to take another ratchet strap and hook it to that ratchet strap so we can uh what do you guys hear that the old max force leaving the driveway we're gonna want to take another ratchet strap good thing i go to princess auto and buy a single all the time and uh and add that to the pile so i don't actually know if you're gonna need to be a muscle bound mofo to get this done but let's just see if i can oh i got the engine to move over now if anybody knows anything about a differential what happens is when one wheel's off the ground and only one's spinning what you're getting is a double reduction or a double increase on this way so drive shaft comes in and goes into your your uh, pinion your pinion drives your crown gear right well then you got your side gears well if you ever guys notice when a truck's doing a burnout and it's burning that inside tire it's going twice as fast because all of the power is being transferred from both tires to one right another so I think what'll happen is I'm increasing my gear ratio by having only one tire off the ground. It do have a limited slip in it, but the f of it is the limited slip in this thing, much like every limited slip from this era, it's f So if I try to spin both tires, one will just spin one way, one will spin the other way. So I'd actually have to spin both tires at the same time to get what needs done. We'll give that a try if we gotta give that a try. We got two bottle jacks, remember? So, but right now, we're just gonna hook my fat ass on the end of that tow rope, open the door, so in case uh, I go hobbling as fast as I can, I don't just run into the door, and uh, we'll give her all the way. Isn't that right, Willard? Willard, there's a chance that I could win the stun war of the day right now, all right, bud? All right, all right, we'll see what happens. And now, let's get this guy over here. Ugh. Oh, yeah, no, we're not gonna be able to get her to start like so. That sucks. I wonder if a guy had a Ronda. But you know, you're down at the river. You could have a Ronda. So let's go grab Ronda. Let's just see. Cause my fat ass doesn't have enough get up and go. So Ronda is gonna take the place of that muscle bound mother that uh, you brought down to the river with you. Rhonda. Oh, there she is. Side wheelie, 
little bit, remember? Dad wheelie, wheelie. Oh yeah, what a treat. All right, so we got a Ronda. You know, a lot of guys do go down the river with their Rondas, the big red Hondas. Oh, she doesn't need to choke right now. There, so you do go down the river with Rhonda. Maybe you got a dirt bike, whatever the you got, but usually you got that Let's see if we can't fire it up, because my fat crippled ass doesn't have enough get up and go to yank on this wheel with the gear ratio at hand. Now, if you guys are smart, go ahead and write in the comment section what the is going on with the gear ratios. Am I lower geared or higher geared with the way I'm doing it? We're gonna try with both wheels off the ground after, but we'll just see what happens here, meow. If something gets wrapped up in here, there's a good chance I could die. All right, well, let's engage Rhonda. Let's see if we can't get her to fire. This isn't even that sketchy. All right, let's do her. Pull her tight. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Because I tied the rope like a m What is it with you anyway? Somebody drop you on your head? Hey, let's try it again, shall we? We're wheeling it a little bit. Oh, maybe get a little run at it, maybe? That's not dangerous, right? Oh, yeah, it worked. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, that's not dangerous. There you go. We got her going. Let's see here. All right, well, the truck is on. Take her out of gear, you know, for safety. So we got that going. So now, if you want to get yourself in voltage, if your voltage isn't charging, right? We went over this before. You're going to need to excite your alternator. So you see the headlights aren't on. We got no power. All right, you can see here on the dash, key is on. Still, no power, right? So here you go. You take your Milwaukee battery, hook her up to power. Hook her up the ground and watch this bolt gauge here. Headlights are on, 14 volts, you're good to go. There you go, you just let her charge. You even got light bars in the back. Mint. Perfect. Oh, we'll leave them batteries go again. We want to kill it again. So there you go. If you got a Rhonda, you can get her running. Rhonda gets her running. So my brain can't really wrap its mind around what the going on i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure you guys in the comments let me know what you figure but i i think with the spider gears in there side gears wherever you prefer i think with those guys in there it's increasing the gear ratio so instead of four tens we got 205s trying to drive the drive shaft i think i think that's what's happening i think i'm also stunned that is correct But what we're gonna do, we'll jack up the other side meow. We'll run two ratchet straps and we'll see if it's not half as easy or twice as easy to get it to run with just ratchet straps. Now remember, whenever you're running heavy equipment, trikes, trucks, and all kinds of stuff with ratchet straps, stay hydrated. We don't want you guys dying from thirst here. What's the Leatherman counter at right now? All of it. I mean, every time you tie an on a ratchet strap, you gotta cut her off. There's been some weekends after some beer drinking. Uh, uh, old Rhonda here had titty tassels hanging off her every which way. <laughs> That's just the way she goes. All right, I do have another bottle jack in there. You guys seen it? I could use it. I'm not gonna use it. I'm using this floor jack because I'm crippled. Way, way, way more awesomer. The bottle jacks do have a lot of get up and go though. I mean, you got all one ton Tanya up in the box. All excited squirting KFC gravy. I mean, bottle jack does do a little better job than the old floor jack. All right, we got it jacked up. These mud flaps are pissing me off. I'm gonna put some holes in them and get them up out of the way. Now, if you youngins are watching this, you don't know what I'm doing. They sell these at Old Princess Auto, or I don't know if they sell them at Hazard Fart, but they just, you put them on a block of wood and you're able to pound holes through rubber and without using a drill bit. Everybody use a drill bit and end up fiddle around and uh well it doesn't usually work that good you get a metal splinter again now the trick to the old splinters in your fingers is you don't even worry about trying to pick them out you just find the chunk of meat wherever she's at and then you just lay it right off and it'll grow back don't do that with your right leg though it won't grow back there we go 
Oh, there. There, now the meat's gone, the metal splinter's gone, and you're good to go. Just showing you guys all the tips today. All right, I'm gonna have to call my brother here in a bit and tell him that it was a ratchet strap, a bottle jack, and a Ronda. Because I know that that Minty Prex out dri driving around in the oil field right now, scratching his head going, how in the sweet fiddler's did he use that to get her going? If we can do it with just a ratchet strap and two bottle jacks, I mean, we ain't lying to a feller. Alrighty, well, we got her strapped up. Most important thing is, didn't get any uh, dirt in my beer. I and mean, we're not drinking PC Light here. You can't get dirt in the Miller. All right, so meow, we're gonna take two of the 25 footers, wrap them up in the middle, and then we'll have one center strap. We'll go off each one. This is gonna tell us on if there was, uh, if the feller was right about the, uh, was the e-brake on? No, no, it wasn't on. Thanks. But it'll tell us if we were right about the uh, gear ratio. Alrighty, so on a scale of one retarded, I think I uh, I put it all the way to 11. I wrapped the rat to strap around the tire, like I showed. I pulled it with Rhonda, and I was able to get it to start. The problem is... He's a f***ing I had the transfer case in four low. So when I limped the old Ford into the shop, I always like to have her in four low. You know, it's nice to go around the yard because it's a Ford, you can unlock the hub and it's basically like two low, right? But I'm stunned and I had it in four low. So the gear increase into the engine would have been redonkulous. Since we got her ass in the air, we'll do both tires and then see if she won't uh, shoot you off here. All right, I got them both linked together. I gotta get a little slack out of her. So I'm able to roll the engine over uh, just by pulling on her like that. And you can feel the compression stroke in the engine. Uh, all right, so we'll tie those two together like so. And now we'll tie this ratchet strap to those ratchet straps like so. So now when we yank on this guy, it's pulling on both tires. So let's see if we can't get her to fire with just old cripple power here. He is so stupid. Uh, what do you guys think? Am I too crippled? Yeah, definitely too crippled. Let's just see here. Let's pull it a little more. A little more. Come on. <laughs> Look what the cripple did! Oh, 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 no. Ain't happening. So let's just drop one side and see if I can't. I don't know how that gear reduction thing's gonna work with the one side. I bet you if you had two guys yanking on this thing, it could go. We'll drop that side down. Now we just got the one to deal with. Ugh. Ugh. Now, if a guy wasn't so crippled, he could probably get this guy, but let's just see. Nothing. Can't get her to go. What for being stunned? All right, so I can't get her to go. What for being stunned? But let's just see here. Hook onto this guy. Now I do have, so if you had a guy that could run the clutch, maybe this might work. But as far as pulling on it, like, like you see, I can wheel it over no problem. But it's just the, the get up and go. I don't got it. I can kind of turn it over, but it won't fire. So yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, if a guy had another guy with two legs, he could probably pull her no problem. But as far as I'm concerned, I'd be screwed. Oh, but if a guy had a quad or a dirt bike, he'd be good to go. All right, well, let's see if a guy just had a dirt bike. Could a guy do it with a dirt bike? I mean, the guy's always got a dirt bike on him, right? Let's see here. All righty, the old KLR. She's doing just fine. Oh, what a treat the old lure is. All right, so what we got here, Meow, is basically my extra set of legs. So if you had two guys pulling on one toe strap, you should be able to get her going. Let's just see here. Pull her tight there. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, she didn't go. Now, this would be a lot easier with a VE pump engine. Those things start if you just fart in the fan. Alrighty, so that didn't work with the KLR first glance. Now, I think it's because the engine's not rolling over fast enough. Because before, it would have been in four low and would have rolled over way faster because being that the gear reduction. But being that we're in four high meow, it's probably not wheeling over fast enough, but the draw on the string is a lot less. So what that means is we need more speed. I needed more of a running start. I couldn't build up enough speed. Because that's what you're gonna want. A cripple on a bike, more speed on the end of a tow rope that's pulling an engine over. Because we know we're all about safety here. I got her going. Oh yeah, that's not dangerous at all. Yeah, there you go. You don't need to worry about getting stuck into the tire. What you doing? Oh yeah, so she's dead again. We're gonna have to go excite the alternator. That's fine. 
Tater, straight the old altar, Tater. No bolts. All the bolts. Yes. So there you go. If you had a buddy that had two legs that could help you pull her at the strap, you'd be able to get her going. Or if you're able to get some kind of run at it or some kind of thing, but there you go. That, that's your answer. You might need a dirt bike or a Ronda, but you can get your truck running. Alrighty, well, let's kill it again. Leave the batteries on, leave everything on, let her die again. Because uh, we got one more test we got to do. But before we carry on with the next test. So this would have worked just fine, I think. I think. This would have worked just fine if this was a VE motor. And it didn't have as much timing in it. The timing in this thing is about 20 degrees. I'm, I'm guessing if you back the timing off to uh, to stock, which is 14.5, it might do it. But it would definitely do it if it was a VE engine. VE engines, you fart in the fan and the mold pricks the fire up. So my final conclusion on that. A, you got to grow an extra leg. If you're a cripple and B or nine or whatever day we're on you uh you just use your, your dirt bike or your trike or uh your big muscly buddy because uh yeah my fat crippled ass ain't doing it so we use the KLR to get it running you know we pull started it with that we use Rhonda to pull start it in four low well too low it, it got it running which is kind of crazy no wonder it was so hard to pull now what we're going to use is wall gas now you're sitting there wondering saying peg what the wall gas well wall gas is electricity now obviously the starter runs off electricity and uh it does a good job of getting this thing running when it's not dead but let's say you're a cock tractor or something like that and you're you, you got all your tools with you in the truck well if you got all your Milwaukee tools with you in the truck chances are you got a couple of batteries right all right so yeah I'm, one of the, I'm just gonna rough this up a little bit you gotta repair the radiator damage before we uh continue on with anything else oh yeah didn't even <clears throat> didn't even go all the way through the tank we're golden a little bit of cosby sauce to clean her up a little bit of that oh yeah a little bit of jb weld action we'll be golden you don't need to worry about radiator tanks go until she's gray oh p auto had the old quick set on sale i mean if you're not burning the out of your uh, radiator reservoir with a chainsaw trying to get it running can you really call yourself a man all right so going back to the wall gas as far as i know electricity when you add up more voltage it decreases the amount of current that you need so basically the amount of wire that you need coming off of it so if you had high voltage going into a low voltage starter you don't need as big as cable so as, as, the, as the voltage goes up the size of the cable can go down from what i've understood that's that's why like your transformers and stuff the voltage coming into it is like six gabillion volt but it's thrown through a wire this big right but when it goes into the transformer it steps down to your 220 for us north americans and then uh comes to your your power panel so long story short the, the wires coming from the transformer to the power panel are usually huge depending on how far the run but when it transforms from high voltage to lower voltage it needs a bigger wire and uh, it has more current behind it that's what I, I think that's what's going on i'm pretty f stunned i don't really know all the f uh magical f pixie dust of all the uh electrical wall gas but what i can tell you is that i'm all about around and finding out so what we're gonna do is uh let's let's picture it this way you're a contract or you're you're a, you're a field mechanic your truck did and you usually carry malwalkini batteries with you right so i got see what i got in here for malwalkini i think i carry two or three depending on the day so let's say let's see here oh i got i had this one i had one in my tire pump and i had that one that we were using up front but all you're gonna need for this is some wire lots of wire and a couple connections so in the uh in the name brand of around and find it out i did uh i did bring a starter i bought a starter off amazon they got pretty good starters on there but i bought a new starter so we can uh we can give her all the way with this i mean if you're gonna give her you might as well give her all the way oh some assholes talking on my back so we got the battery disconnected so now what we're gonna want to run is some jumper cables so we got that guy hooked up there and now we're gonna want to daisy chain three malwalkini batteries together via these connectors so this is gonna be one of the instances where a feller might want to really engage his safety squints. All right, so as she sits right now, we got three batteries wired up. Now let's just see here. Now we should have about 60 volts coming out of here. 58.8 or 56.8 volts coming out of three batteries. Now coming out of two batteries, we got 40 volts. And out of one battery, we got 16 volts. So this guy's got 16 in her. Wonder how much power is left in it. Oh, it's dead. So we'll swap it out for a new one here. Let's just. Give her all the way with 60 volts and see what happens. Do you think it's gonna start it? Who knows? Only one way to find out. So that guy's hooked the ground. Oh, if I put power to this guy, it should engage the starter. It should. But 60 volts, there's gonna be all kinds of sparks going on. All right, so let's just hook this guy up. There shouldn't be any sparks just yet. So when we hook this to this solenoid, we should have crank. 
and and welding oh i can't see shit all of a sudden i can't i'm seeing spots right now real bad like real bad so when i hook this up should crank the engine 60 volts going to the start you guys ready The starter does not like that. We got smoke going on somewhere. We got no connection here anymore. Is it here? Did I just burn something up? I think I might've just burnt the starter up. Oh, these wires are getting a little toasty already. Is it? Well, that battery's dead. That battery's dead. And that battery's dead. So I've killed all three batteries in that short amount of time. For test purposes, let's just see if it's the starter or the battery. I think we killed all three of them batteries. They did not like putting out all that power. All right, now we got that hooked up. We'll just see if it cranks. If it's the starter we killed or the Milwaukee. I think we killed the Milwaukee. Yeah, the starter's still good. So what we got here, we got one that's dead. This guy's and this guy's. Let's just see what happens when we put her on the charger. First battery, it said it's charged. That's probably not good. Does it still work at a tool? How is it working? Oh, now it's good. Does this thing, do they have like a fault thing that shorts them out? If you if you hook them up bass backwards, is this one good? No, well, this one's dead. Let's see what happens when you put this one on the charger. Is it doing? Did it restart it? No, oh, for creek, is it dead? That one's that one's good. Apparently this thing didn't want to party with uh, with 60 volts. All right, so maybe 60 volts isn't good. So I wonder if we hooked up 12 volts, well, if we're doing, or 20 volts. Yeah, let's try 20 volts in parallel, but with lots of Milwaukee batteries. All righty, she's the next day, meow. I cleaned up some of my junk that was laying around. We still have to dial some batteries together to see if we can't get that old pile of start but well uh, last night while well, i was having a you know a dirty old uh post game beer and and dialing the old saw and i went to uh old p auto their bench mounted chain uh sharpener man I, I i bought this a while ago i almost got the thing wore out and man you can just dial through rock old furs all kinds of stuff and then bring the old saw chain right back to brand new i'm getting pretty good at it so yesterday when we were doing the video it was uh what was it plus 16 out communist measurements sun was shining minty as this morning what, the mine is 15 out for f this creek. Look, what the f is this? Well, I don't really know the f communist conversion for it, but it's cold out. And if Willard had balls, they'd freeze to the f forks. But we gotta go for a dump trip this morning. Think we might have a little fire up old old and uh, do a cold start on her. Is she gonna need Cosby sauce with her dog? Is she addicted? <laughs> okay, crank her up. Come on. <laughs> Choke her up, she's cold. Come on. There's condensation on the pump. Oh. Come on. Come here. She's gonna go. Is she gonna go, numb nuts? Are you stunned? Come on. Come on! Oh, she's shooting. She's struggling. She's not though. Alright, move out. Get us out of here. I guess it's not addicted. And I guess she got her stun. Oh, it's even got oil pressure. Yeah. Alrighty, well meow. We can get back to our previously scheduled programming. Now this old pilot. So we left off by uh, completely writing off a $300 battery. I got her sitting over here by the front door. What for, uh, I trust these about as much as I can trust a politician. Batteries light on fire. There's no argument in that. So that's why I actually have all my batteries in these metal cabinets now. In case they do light on fire, hopefully it doesn't burn my shop down. I don't trust those things, they're junk. That's why we gotta burn diesel and gas instead of that garbage that'll burn your ass. Stupid wall gas. What is that? JB welded this thing to my ass. Oh yeah. So I got the tank all JB welded up. If this isn't a strong message for don't drink and JB weld, I don't know what it is. It'll be fine. So what we're gonna do, meow, go back to the batteries, but I'm not really afraid of putting 20 volts to a 12 volt system. I mean, they like that. I'm pretty sure they like that. But we'll put 20 volts to her and it'll make the candle light a little brighter, but you know, no big deal. We had the Milwaukee rigged up in series before. So what we're doing in series is we're, we're taking the voltage and we're doubling it every time. So instead of 20 volts, it was 40 volts or 60 volts, depending on how many batteries we put in there. So meow, we're gonna do parallel. We'll see what parallel will do with the same amount of batteries. And that should be a lot less hard on the last battery in the lineup. But we're gonna need more wires. 
Alrighty, so we got all the negatives hooked together, all the positives hooked together, and these things are pretty dangerously close to each other, but I mean, that's fine. Now we'll have 20 volts and all kinds of uh, cold cranking amps. So let's see, let's see what'll happen here. So we should have 20 volts here, meow. So let's just see what the happens when we hook it up. We're just turning all the lights on. So everything's running on 20 volts right now. So I'm gonna, before we kill the, kill the damn thing, so, uh, let's see if she cranks. Oh, it says it's got, on the old amp gauge, it says we got 18 volts. I mean, that's fine. Let's just see what happens. Beats hard. Yeah, that's not enough to get up and go with the old starter. So now the only thing we can do meow is just add more batteries. So we got five batteries. Yeah, we're just gonna keep adding more and more and more because this fella doesn't have a whole lot of quit in him on like a Dodge transmission. Nailed it. There's gonna be a lot of wires going on. Eventually, we're gonna equal up to the amount of uh, how big these jumper cables are with the, uh, with the 10 gauge here. Let's see if four or five of these batteries will fire up this dirty old third. All the amps on the gauge. Let's just see here. Will she start? No, nope. it's got a little bit of crank to her. Let's see. No. Nope. As I sit here wiring up all of my uh, Melwalkini batteries, I'm sitting here remembering. So I don't know how long you guys have been watching the channel for. A lot of you guys have been here for a while. Uh, I did a video where I went and revived a uh, an 88 or it was a, oh, it was a 90, 1990. Was it the 90 or? Yeah, it was the 90 because all the tires blew off. If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. I mean, what is a bit of a flat? All right, well this tire's but it did something I've never seen done before. Blow the steering shock right the out of the old door. God it. We had some bad luck, and now we got some good luck. Yeah, you see that right there? You see that? Oh, f Now that's the last of my uh, front left tire. Soccer. So all the tires blew off of that old Ford. That was a, yeah, it was a 1990 F350 dually. And uh, I was actually parked at uh, a diner in at Edmonton Oil, Alberta. And I was in, in there enjoying myself a uh, BLT. And when I hobbled out into the parking lot, some uh, some lady asked me, she says, uh, would you like a fire extinguisher? I said, well, I'm pretty hot, but I'm not that hot. Then I, she proceeds to gesture towards the rickshaw. Well, lo and behold, I went and, uh, I went and opened up the door to the said rickshaw. The, uh, something had lit on fire in the interior and it completely melted together almost uh, every Milwaukee tool that I had. I went in for some lunch before I f***ed off from old uh, city here. And if you notice the rickshaw windows are kind of tinted, like really tinted. Turns out one of my Milwaukee batteries decided to light on fire and it lit everything in the back seat on fire. I got a bunch of my good Milwaukee drill. Oh yeah, look at this piece of art. A good Mel crate's gone, look at this. Oh yeah, yeah, she'll still cheech. Oh, even a good roll of Toby tape, my good roll of wire, my good picnic blanket. That nice picnic blanket I found at the dump. It's the way she goes. Even my new compressor got it. it was, well, it was all my M12s. It was uh, my impact, my drill, and a couple other, my 3 8 impact, my drill, and I think it was one of my ratchets that got melted. I don't remember exactly. So I did that and I, I killed most of my M12 tools. And a week later after the video dropped, some minty Prick sent me a bunch of batteries, a bunch of uh, two guys. Two guys sent me a bunch of M12 batteries and a, and a couple of drills, a couple of impacts, and I couldn't believe it. So if you guys are watching that right now, I appreciate the of you. And uh, all the things that you sent, well, I'm probably gonna up right now, but I mean, that's just the way she goes. I don't know what's going on here. I think that's right. This looks like a nightmare. We got a full tank of gas and all these batteries. Let's try her again. How much on the bolt gauge? Oh, it, oh, it's making things twerk. Like everything's kind of jumping and moving around. Is this? Oh, my stereo doesn't work anymore. So that's probably not good. But let's just try firing it up. Oh, it's making the starter make a weird noise. So you guys see my wipers? Look how fast they go. That's on low. Let's see what they do on fast. Oh, that's awesome. How much voltage? All of it. I mean, we're definitely pressure testing the old electrical system on the fur here. Yeah, there's not enough crankage going on. Now, I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's, I don't know what that noise is. It's probably electrical noise from all the electrical going through it. I don't know what that noise is. Do you guys hear it? If I can hear it, it's bad, because I'm 
deaf. You couldn't hear a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin plant. Well, this battery connection is getting hot. Now, usually when something's getting hot, it's what for the connection being dog. And that's exactly what's going on. So inside of here is loose. Inside of here is pretty tight. Let's see. Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, these jumper cables are sacked out already. Junk. All right. So instead of fixing those guys, I went and grabbed a set of dirty old dump ones that I found a while ago. Yeah, well. The dump provide and uh, snip the ends off one side. You gotta love dump cables. See, yeah, what we're gonna do is just tape all of this together and in hopes of a good connection. So all these batteries are still at full chooch. Let's see what happens now with better connections. All right, let's do it. Oh, lots of sparks from out of the hood. There's a lot of sparks going on under here. I think it's because of the connection. Bingo. Oh yeah, all the sparks coming out of there. So, being the connection sucks ass, and it's just letting all the smoke out. So what we're gonna do now is make a better connection. All right, so I went uh, and hammered a couple battery lugs on there of the non connection variety. I smell ozone, or whatever the that is when batteries aren't hooked up right, but that's fine. Let's see what happens now. Good connection, all the amps, all the connection. There you go. Now let's see how many. Let's see how many. Oh, the all oh, the electrical in the truck is not having a good time. It's almost like stuff doesn't like to run off all the voltage. So we got a good connection on here. So that's what it was the whole time. It was a connection. So let's unhook batteries. So unhook this one. That's one, two, three. Okay. We got three batteries unhooked. So now we only got one, two, three, four hooked up. So let's see if she starts off four. Four Malwalkinis. Cranks just fine. Man. All right, we gotta go down from there now. I can't believe how well it cranks. Do you think the battery here is sucking all the voltage out of these batteries and like making its own charge? I don't know. But one hook that guy, meow, and that guy. So now we only got one, two, we got two Malwalkinis hooked up, but only two. So let's see if it'll start off two. How in the sweet fiddlers? It's not melting my brain, it's blowing my mind. But the voltage is down now, so I'm gonna guess that the batteries on the floor have discharged enough into the Series 31 that we're at a proper voltage now. So let's shut her off again. Now we'll unhook the last two batteries and just see if it'll start. So now none of these are hooked up. The headlights are still on. So that means that that big battery's got some charge to it. So let's see if it'll crank. So what happened is the Milwaukee's transferred their 20 volts of juice into the 12 volt battery and now she's able to crank and start. That's crazy. Well, it did run a little bit, so it would have charged it up a little bit, but that's wild. I didn't think uh, I didn't think that would happen. So we'll let this battery die off again. I'm gonna head to the dump. Well, I'm gone, let the battery die off. And then we'll see, we'll start it out with one and then we'll work our way up to three. This is mint. I did not think that would happen. Oh, it burnt out a couple of my clearance lights and they might've been dead already, but that's fine. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You gotta love dump days. I mean, dump days are a ticket. So there you go. You got the old fur started with the chainsaw, mint. You got the old fur started with the old killer back there, Rhonda. She fired up mint. Pulled, pulled on the old tire with the ratchet strap. I mean, we're good. If you had two guys, I'm, I'm thinking if you had a guy on each tire with two ratchet straps yanking, I think it would go, but I'm just a one-legged show. So it's the place you go. But I do think the two guys could pull start this thing with ratchet straps. And the third one, we, we went ahead and we dialed her up with couple Malwalkini batteries. I mean, that's pretty good. So all three that I thought would work, 
worked. Man, so now you don't have to call the old lady. You don't have to call your mom or your dad or whatever the case may be to come get your beans out of the fire. You got her in. So meow, this is the part of the video if you're a Patreon, you're the only one that's going to see this. Oh, the minty prick Patreons get to watch the Dodge get into a fight with a dirty old poplar tree. Away she goes. So while you guys were watching that, how many of you minty pricks were wagering on uh, me butchering the starter to the point of uh, complete destruction? Because that's exactly what happened. 60 volts going through it. It welded something up in the Bendix. The Bendix stayed engaged. And uh, while well, that starters get up and go, got up and left. All you minty mouth breeders and mongoloids watching this garbage, I appreciate you. Every last one of you minty pricks. Oh, you know what I don't appreciate though? My back. I blew my back out something fierce there. Well, not Dodge Guy style, but I blew my back out big time. And man, is my crippled ass struggling. <sighs> I got like the crippled hat trick. One leg, a bunged up back, up foot. Just a drunken, derelict disaster of a human being. I hope you minty pricks like the outcome of this old video. I didn't think uh, she would fire up that easy on the bomb start going down the wood. I did think she was going to start with the chainsaw with the uh, alter tater. I didn't think that the alter tater would draw that hard on the saw when uh, when the thing was excited. There was a lot of draw on that. Enough draw to kill almost three V-belts. Mint. As far as yanking on a, uh, a tow rope or a ratchet strap around the tire and get it running, two big guys pulling on that, no problem at all. If you had three little guys or four cripples, I think you'd be able to get her done right minty i really want your guys input have you heard of another way to get a truck running that maybe it's a myth or maybe it's something your uncle told you or your your brother's daddy's cousin's uncle's brother's dog's friend or something like that he told you and there's a way to get a truck running i'd like to hear it in the old fucker below because uh me and old sawed off frenchman were coming up with a bunch of different ways to get something running and we we can't really come up with another we were going to follow a tree with the ratchet strap on the tree and it's going to pull on the tire to get it started but that was the same concept of uh, a guy yanking on the tire and uh he wants to come up with some kind of garage door spring on a uh on some kind of a kickstart thing. i don't know he, he's pretty smart the old sawed off frenchman so but if you guys can come up with something we'd love to hear the ideas down in the below as far as gassers go like an old gasser like let's say if you had a 79 square body and you ran the uh ran the f***ing dead you could use the battery like a mel Joaquini 12 volt battery to hook right into the coil and get the thing running hopefully it would uh, have enough spark like if you were bomb starting it you could probably use the mel Joaquini to uh to get the coil to fire but i mean that that's all ideas for another video you'd probably be less inclined to burn the belt off too what for not be a v-belt running on a serpentine pulley so enough of me mouth breathing the mongoloid along here. I got to, uh, I gotta say thank you to all the Patreons. You guys are minty as I didn't give you guys a shout out in the last video. I apologize. But this one, I wrote her all down. And my sweet fiddler's is there ever a bunch of you mouth breathing minty Oh man, these super duty seats are just a ticket for a up back. I'll tell you that for all. Alrighty, well starting off the list, we got the uh, 10 we got Wrench Smashing Every Day, Will Morrison, Superfly, Spencer Love, Saskatchewan Pirate, Minty Missouri 6.9, Mike Cosby Sauce, Michael Ricks. Oh, so far, all these are minty names that I can pronounce. A lot of, when them Frenchmen and Germans get in there, it just fiddles the whole list. And lo and beer hold, we got Macalichi Leonard, Liam Parrish, Kona Strong, Devin Davidson, Jewel is Drunk 69, Jonathan Templin, Jesse, Jason Rhodes, George Gill, Garrett Newharts, Ethan Allen, Edward Meeks, Danny Dubier, Chris and Trent, Bill Sozoda, Big Green Tractors, Ashley Aluier. Oh, we got another check! Ashley Aleary, uh, L -A, I, I'm stunned. Andrew Whitecomb, Andrew Hamburg, and Alex Hardy. All right, those are all the 10 buckers. We got the 15 buckers at Mitch Slowly, James K, Dirty Degenerate 1371. I wonder what 1371 is. And Cody, we got the 1776ers, Mint. Michael Cordell and Cardell Oli. We get 20 buckers at Thomas, Tamer Broom, Paul Silvestri, Paul Silvestri. I'm stunned. I can't, I can't pronounce 
Told you guys. Nick selling Mud Monster 95. Mud Monster 95. What do you got, bud? Little 95 Ferd. Michael Ziegler, Kevin Roy, Hample's Transport, Donnie Bra, Big T, Wyatt Andrews. Mint. We got the 25 Buckers. We got Stump Maker, Joe, and Ed. Alrighty. Well, those are all the minty new Patreons. Now, believe it or not, there's a bunch of minty pricks out there that see my fat crippled ass hobbling around in the snow and they're like, you know what? We're going to pity that minty prick with a raise. Mint. Hey, a pity is better than no ass sawed off Frenchman. Alrighty. So these are all the raises. We got Zach Weaver, Mr. Trudeau, Mint, Cole Leveling, Jim Blash, James Driscoll, Daniel DeBoer, Daniel DeBeer, Tabernak, Nick B, Ethan Clickweir, 1202, Minty as Johnny Mann, Dawson Gardner, Nick Conrad, Luke Klein, Poop Loops Deportation, <laughs> Mint, Blaine Parker, it's 1776. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and just so you know, oh, the 1202s and 1776, I mean, they just deserve a special handy. James C. Frank, Jeffrey Bates, Bobby Benton, J.C., I live in Canada. So do I, buddy, but uh, Oil Bird is going to identify as not Canadian. We got Zach S., brother from another mother, race car 69, Kelby, Minty McMinterson's, Colby Shot, Joshua Wagoneer, Dr. Felter Snatch. <laughs> Hey, that's my doctor. And for some reason, some way, somehow, he was able to uh, put both his hands on my shoulders on the last prostate exam. I don't, I don't know how he did that. He must have been a magic man. And when you get to my age, I'm telling you, fellas, your, uh, your dignity and privacy really goes out the window. Especially when old Doc there loses his watch trying to dig the last pickle out of the jar. We got one inch power stroke. <laughs> you and me both, brother. Winter Haynes, Logan Chevrier, 1776. <laughs> We got sassy mud trucks and degenerate trucks. I mean, that could pretty much be anybody in this list, bud. We got sacked out third gen, minty as fuck. How many trucks do you go through, bud? Is she an auto or standard? Brad Laporte, Tom Abbott, three inch Nimrod, Richard C. Boosie Jr. And mint, got a junior. I'm a junior. Mason Grado, Tanya Lewis, 1776. Sean Morgan, Charlie, Stephen Schultz, Michael Allen Watts, Jordan Ryan, Daniel Meyer, 1776. <laughs> Mint, Daniel Everett, Tim the Pool Man, Amos Jones, Bryden Brotherwood, Tanya Casey, Stephen Michelle, Matthew Eblin, Garrett Harding, Butt Crack Bandit, 1776. <laughs> Mint, Dominic Talone, Shane LeBlanc, Terrence Gabruri, White Half, Sharp D, Brad Sibert, Zachary, Tyler Smith, 1776. <laughs> Zachary, 1776. <laughs> AFU, Brian Zepp, Sean Achuleta, Achuleta, Tabernak. Is that French or am I stunned? I think I'm stunned. Paul Michaud, Matt Aix, Tweeter, Cornberger, <laughs> Randy Shover. Jacob D, 1993, Dalen, Jesse Curry, Jib Steak, Luke, Busby, Pork and Beans MT, Hurst Old, 1979, Alex Witterman, Jacob Horner, Nate Van, Logan Raymond, PG Green, 69, Bud Bedrewer, 79, Avon Anderson, Matt Baker, Daniel Troutwine, Josh Clevenger, John Pickirk, Connor, Bam Bam, One Inch Willie, Caden North, John Patrick, Mud Monkey, Queef Queef a Doer, Ferd Fer, Wayne Rogers, Dylan Caveney, Sean Glasser, Corey Crackover, Diesel for Life 7779, or 7779, Mint, Alex Bocure, there's a lot of minty Frenchmen in here, I tell ya. Mismatch, Peckerhead, AG1776. <laughs> Mint, David Coy, Jimmy Corley, Dylan Roy, Derek Lavallee, Trevor Ballard. My best buddy growing up was Riley Ballard. The guy was minty as Well, I had a few best buds. Jimmy Baldwin, Spencer Rombo. That's a badass last name right there. Sean Arc Velvita, whatever the f Velvita, like the fancy cheese. Keegan Smith, D Tech, CC Carroll, McCaw Cheek, David Lentz, Shaw, David, Machoey Leonard, Noel Stute. Craven Mahead, Craven, Craven some head, Danny Delusky, Jax Woods, and Chase Burlingame. Holy fuck, that was a mouthful. But every fucking drop of diesel that I burn, every bit of Cosby sauce I get to spray, and every little bit of freedom of speech that I get to enjoy is because of all you minty pricks. So you see, that's why I like to handwrite every one of you minty pricks name down in the old notebook there, because you guys are minty as 
And uh, if it wasn't for you, Minty Pricks, I mean, this road would still be going down the show, but it wouldn't be half the show. I tell you that for all. All right. Well, until next time, you got to go ahead and uh, make sure that happens. Make sure uh, I can turn that the right way up and uh, keep your ass. I can just sense stunned. Oh, there's a stunned dog.